Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. Just a quick reminder, and you are going to hear this for the rest of the week, I am going to be on break all next week. I will be returning to my normal schedule the following week. So today begins with the spring sale going on at GOG right now. Pick up games like the Witcher 3 Game of the Year Edition for 40% off at $29.99 US dollars, Starbound for 33% off at $9.99 US dollars, and Honey Pop for 75% off at $2.49. These are just three of my own recommendations, but don't forget, all of the games at GOG are DRM free. Voodoo Vice released for original Xbox and is getting remastered, so there is a new trailer out to announce the game is releasing on April 18th on Xbox One and PC. Hello Games has announced that an update is coming to No Man's Sky called the Pathfinder Update sometime later this week. It will add ground vehicles to the game, something that was previously discovered by data miners at launch. Horizon Zero Dawn has been updated to version 1.03, with the short patch notes being fixed multiple crashes and progression fixes. In a weird coincidence, For Honor will update to version 1.03 on both PS4 and Xbox One later today, which brings a bunch of balance changes to Peacekeeper, Berserker, Conqueror, and Valkyrie. The PC patch has been delayed for the time being. As always, if you want to find the full patch notes to any of these updates, there are shortened links in the description down below, as well as links for sources for all of today's stories. In other For Honor news, the player base is not doing that well, as today is three weeks from launch, and the game has lost about 50% of its total player count. Are you still playing For Honor? Let me know in the comments section down below. The signups have begun for Bethesda's Quake Champions, the next game in the Quake series. You can find a link to sign up for that down below too. A tabletop pen and paper RPG for Elite Dangerous has resumed its Kickstarter after receiving a copyright infringement complaint from the copyright holder of the Elite franchise. Basically, the complaint went nowhere and it only seemed to be a threat. 13 games have been added to the PlayStation Now streaming service. All of them come from the developer Sega. The list includes Sonic Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Golden Axe, Altered Beast, and Virtual Fighter 2. Moving on to some Overwatch news with Jeff Kaplan talking about Orisa, the 24th hero added to the game. She is staying on the public test realm for a bit longer than previous characters like Ana or Sombra because a lot of feedback is coming in from the community and they want to get her right. Kaplan ends by saying most likely she will go live later in the month rather than this early. Speaking of Orisa, she has already gotten nerfed on the PTR by having a smaller magazine and her supercharger ability has had its cost increase by 15%. Ana too has been hit by the nerf stick as her base damage is dropping from 80 to 60 and her grenades damage and healing is being cut in half. Let me know what you think of these changes in the comment section down below. In final Overwatch news, Blizzard promises that there will be more storyline developments in 2017. The last time any comics were released was during the holiday season when Tracer kissed a woman and the internet either fapped to it or plain didn't give a fuck. And then once again we are going to end today's show with talking about the Nintendo Switch. Well I guess it's a little bit more than that. You'll see, you'll see. Yeah, I know it's been the main topic of a lot of shows lately, but it did just come out, and it's either I talk about this or Rainbow Six Siege or how much I love AMD Ryzen. Nintendo says the Switch has had the best sales in the US in their history. In its first two days, it sold about 22,000 more units than the Wii U did in Japan, and about 41,000 less than the original Wii. Nintendo also reports Breath of the Wild has sold more copies than any other game at launch, again, in their own history. Speaking of Breath of the Wild, a team has already gotten the Wii U version running on the CEMU emulator. Currently though, the frame rate is absolutely terrible, and one I would not go near even if you tried to bribe me with all the candy in the world. Nintendo's new platform unfortunately does not have a new philosophy behind it because a YouTuber has been flagged for using a 1-2 switch sound effect in one of their videos. Josh Thomas is his name and he claims that he was demonstrating 1-2 switch while adding his own commentary on top of it, which would qualify as fair use. And while I see it that way, uh, Nintendo doesn't. Thomas asks Nintendo, please stop trying to stop me from celebrating you as a company. You know, truth be told, those are very inspiring words. Let's hope they don't fall on deaf ears. They will. And that brings us to the final Switch topic, which could be a solution to the connectivity issues with the left Joy-Con controller. Another YouTuber whose channel name is Spawn Wave posted a video yesterday explaining the issue may be the antenna that is built into the PCB of the controller. He was able to attach a piece of wire to the trace on the circuit board to solve the issue. If Nintendo were to do a recall, which really seems unlikely, they'll probably just end up doing something similar and then giving you a replacement, or completely redesigning the PCB with a bigger antenna. Now this story doesn't exactly stop there, because companies like Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony want to forbid you from repairing your own console, just like Spawnwave did. This is not a tinfoil hat issue. Console manufacturers are lobbying against what is called the Right to Repair Bill that was started in Nebraska. This bill would require companies to not only sell parts at a lower price to third-party repair shops, 
shops, but to your average everyday consumer as well. That is, your average everyday consumer with a soldering iron and an understanding of integrated circuits. The reason why they want this stopped is just laughable, citing it will compromise their intellectual property, and also, they are worried about public safety. Listen, if someone out there wants to go and try to repair their PS4 or something, and they have no idea what they're doing, then they do so at their own risk. But once you move past that it's a magic box that produces moving pictures which you can control without wires or cables or anything, it's an invention. It's a machine, it's a bunch of silicon and copper, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to fix your own property. Now, I'm not recommending that everybody go out and buy a soldering iron and go to town on your Xbox or Switch if they stop working. If you don't know what you're doing, you could hurt yourself or a loved one or cause a fire. But if you do know what you're doing and you're able to fix your own machine, according to Sony's ELUA, you put yourself at risk of losing online and offline abilities of your PS4 and access to the PlayStation Network effectively losing access to your entire account, all because you fixed your own stuff. At the very least, if Nintendo finds out that unauthorized repairs were performed on your hardware, they will refuse to fix it, but will return it in the condition it was in. Now, if I own a vacuum cleaner and I have to replace the belt on it because it broke, and then say the motor goes out so I have to send it in to get it fixed, that company, first of all, won't refuse to fix it because something else was changed, and more importantly, won't take away my ability to vacuum my own damn house. I want to conclude this by asking anyone in my audience if you live in Nebraska to call up your congressman and tell them that Bill 67, the right to repair bill, is important to not only you, but to everyone to be able to fix their own property without fear of corporate backlash. How do you feel about having the right to repair your own electronics? Let me know in the comment section down below, please. You also have the right to know tomorrow's game releases for PC, The Filmmaker, A Text Adventure, Ghost Blade HD, Sub Siege, Demon Lord, Fix Me, Fix You, Buccaneers Bounty and Boom, The Last Patient, Space Jammers, Space Tours VR, Episode 1, The Solar System, and The Guard of Dungeon. For Xbox One, Verdun. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And what is an English teacher's favorite drink? Tequila Mockingbird. Yeah, I'm gonna catch hell for that joke. I know at least uh, I know a couple of people. Kennedy, hi, by the way. I know you're gonna. Oh, that's that that joke. That was a terrible joke. Tequila Mockingbird. So, um, yeah, uh, right to repair. I I don't know how anybody could be like, no, you shouldn't let have. You shouldn't be able to fix your own things. That is totally not something you should be able to do. No, if a, if your computer goes out, send it in. If if the hard drive goes bad in this thing, you must send it in. Say the disk drive goes bad, like you know, you know, say the uh, the laser goes out. It's just the laser. It's just another disk. You could be you just swap it out with really any other Blu-ray laser that like, of the same standard. You know, there are not very many standards of the damn thing. Um, there's I. I they just want to make more money off of you to because you have to send it in to get it fixed through them. They want that money. It's not the it's not that you know you they don't want things getting fixed. They don't care if it's fixed or not. It'll still work the same. So I it, it, it's it's a weird issue. I I, I don't want to be all tinfoil hatty, but I also don't want people to. You know, I don't want my rights being taken away. And I have the right to fix my own stuff. I don't know if anybody else knows out there. This, you can look this up. Apple tried to sue to have it so people couldn't jailbreak their iPhone. And the court said, no, they own it. They can do whatever the hell they want to it. Jailbreaking the phone is not an illegal thing per se. They're not, that doesn't open up open it up for nefarious tasks per se uh so people have the right to modify their 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 iphones and so all phones can be uh, unlocked from there and apple i think learned a pretty good pretty good thing we're not going to try to challenge this in court we're just going to just let try to just ham fist people because what they did is they they tried to prove it in court and failed and it all went downhill for them in that aspect so ah uh, yeah um that switch, that that switch. Thing. I, I you see, if I got a switch, I would definitely be able to put in a an, an antenna into the le left Joy-Con. I feel completely comfortable in myself that I could solder in a little wire, run it down the bottom of the controller like the guy did, and it would work better. That doesn't seem out of my own expertise, 
But say if I had, say if I did that and then sent in my switch, say like the screen started flickering and I sent in my, my switch with the controllers and everything. And they saw the controllers, like there's been a modification to the controller. We're not, we're not fixing this. It's like, but the controller doesn't have anything to do with the base unit. And I fixed that. I fixed it. It's not like it's not working. It still works. It works fine. It works better than what you had it. So why is that? Why is that bad? How is that a bad thing? And they'll just, they'll just ship it back to you refusing to, to work on it. I don't, I don't feel like that's the right policy. I feel like, Hey, as long as it's in working condition, you know, this part works, we'll fix the other part. We're not going to touch that other thing. Cause it has modifications to it, which they have out, they have that right. But to not have to deal with the entire system to refuse customer service in that aspect, because you fixed your own thing. That's, that's stupid. I, this end card has gone on for way too long. I could go on and on about this. It's such a, it, it's such a horrible practice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I talk to me about it in the comments section. You know, we, I, I respond to all of my comments. I don't know if you know, I do respond to all of my comments, or at least I try to. If it's something like nice joke, like I get, I get those a lot. I may not respond to it. I try to, if it's somebody new, I try to for sure. But if it's somebody I know that's been around a lot, like Kennedy, hi Kennedy. <laughs> hi everybody else out there. I'm going to have to do fucking shout outs now for days. All right. Well, get yourself known in the comments section through good means, and I will start shouting out some names, like, uh, hi, Bob and Cat, hi, Viper the Red, hi, um, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, I can't remember, Sal Khan, I can't remember his name, he's always tweeting me, he's always retweeting me on Twitter, I will go find out names, we'll do a shout out video next week for viewers who leave lots of comments, Lots of positive comments. Don't just spam comments now to try to get the show. Only, only of a, not that many people really watch this show just yet, okay? About a hundred people a day watch this show. I'm not famous yet. Nobody, you know, trying to get in with me is not a, it's not really like, oh, I got in with Total Biscuit. Oh, I talked to Linus. It's like, yeah, nope. Just, just little old dandruff right here. I'm going to shut up now. Social media links are over here. Click over here for subscribing. Click over here for yesterday's episode. This is the longest end card ever. It has to be. Goodbye, everybody. Leave your comments. Like, subscribe, share. Bye.